Uh, those three Palestinians were killed after the Israeli forces have fired artillery shells on uh, observation points affiliated to the Palestinian uh, uh, factions along the borders. Uh, actually, uh, uh, a shilling finzi, you can call it, uh, has been erupted uh, by the Israeli forces when they try to shell every single uh, observation point along the borders between Gaza and Israel. Just two hours ago, uh, the artillery, the Israeli artillery, have shelled an observation point in Khan Yunis, in the most uh, uh, southern part in Gaza's uh, strip, leading to the death of two Palestinians. Uh, afterwards, we know that those Palestinians are affiliated to Qassam, the armed wing of Hamas, uh, uh, the Islamic movement which is ruling the Gaza Strip. After uh, uh, 30 minutes, the artillery have sh f fired also uh, a bomb shelling toward another observation point in Rafah, also on the south, leading to the uh, killing of uh, one Palestinian also from uh, Hamas, uh, at, at, at least three Palestinians and 20 were wounded uh, uh, after this uh, shelling. Also in the north, uh, 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 and the Israeli uh, forces have fired uh, 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 two artillery bombs toward an observation point in, in Jabalia, in the northern part of Gaza Strip, leading to the injury uh, amongst a lot of people. Uh, uh, also, there's a, a serious uh, injury among those uh, uh, injuries. The skies over Gaza have turned black with smoke from burning tires every Friday for months now. Israeli army snipers and other troops have killed around 140 Palestinians since the weekly protest started in March thousands of others have been injured. Protesters say they'll continue to fly kites and balloons carrying petrol bombs and burning rags across the border until Israel lifts its 12-year siege of Gaza. Israel says fires started by the protesters have destroyed large areas of farmland and crops. This protester, who insisted we hide his identity, says life in Gaza has become so unbearable he and his friends are determined to force change. Our aim is to end this siege completely. The situation in Gaza is unbearable, often no electricity, not enough medicine, no good life, unemployment. There's no future for young people here. We use simple materials like the incendiary balloons to protest. This is the Palestinian way. So what would it take for Israel to begin to lift the siege on Gaza and potentially end the protests? Some experts say the solution has a lot to do with ending rivalry between Palestinian political factions. Israel began its air, land and sea blockade on Gaza in 2007 when Hamas took control here. Now there are some analysts that say that unless there is reconciliation between Hamas and Fatah and a unity government is formed, then Israel's siege and the violence between Hamas and Israel will continue. Repeated Egyptian efforts to broker a reconciliation deal between Hamas and Fatah have failed. The refusal by Hamas to hand control of Gaza's internal security to the Fatah-dominated Palestinian Authority is a main sticking point. Another involves paying the salaries of 20,000 Hamas employees. Hamas has reportedly accepted the latest Egyptian proposal and is waiting for Fatah to respond. We need to talk about ceasefire, Palestinian reconciliation, election within the Palestinian society, making political, fundamental political reform, encouraging Hamas to be part of the legitimate Palestinian political system. This is how we, find, we reach a final status a settlement. And Israel should encourage this. Some Israeli politicians have called for a full-blown military offensive against Hamas to stop the kites and balloons. Hamas says young Palestinians have every right to protest against the blockade using what it calls peaceful means. A committee representing all political factions in Gaza has called on Palestinians to protest again on Friday, the 17th week in a row. These men say it's their duty as Palestinians to protest against Israel's occupation. They put together their kite, clipping its tail, which they say will give it balance as it carries the burning cloth over Gaza's border fence. They soak the sackcloth in petrol and oil because they say it helps it burn slowly. We are here to prove to the whole world that we will never leave our land. 
we're going to launch burning kites towards that occupied land. I'm not afraid of the Israelis, I'm only afraid of God. Hamas leader Ismail Haniya sits close by. He has come to support the protesters. Hamas say the kites and balloons that carry the burning rags into Israel are a peaceful form of protest. Israeli snipers have been targeting balloons that the protesters have been launching well behind the main demonstration. These protesters say they will continue launching their kites, holding those incendiary devices until Israel lifts the siege. The men light the rag and the kite drifts off towards the border fence. Israel says fires started by protesters have destroyed large areas of crops and private land. Protesters set fire to tires, which they use as cover from Israeli army snipers positioned along the fence. Israeli tanks targeted Hamas positions along the border after news that an Israeli soldier had been injured. The Israeli army later reported that the soldier had died from his wounds. Protesters climbed the walls of a building being used by the Israeli soldiers. The army responded with tear gas and what sounded like live ammunition. An Israeli drone flew overhead. More than 140 protesters have been killed since the weekly demonstration started four months ago. The Israeli army shot this man in the leg during a protest in April. I'm sending a message to the occupiers that this is our land and you came and took it from us. You Jews who came from France and England and around the world, here it is our land and we inherited it from our grandfathers and before them. The Israeli government is under pressure by some politicians to launch a large-scale military offensive to stop the protesters. As the day ended, Israeli fighter jets targeted various Hamas bases across Gaza, including this one in the densely populated neighborhood of Zaytun. The Ministry of Health says at least three civilians were injured in this attack. Charles Stratford, Al Jazeera, Gaza.